everybody. I'm going to get started because I have a lot to cover, and I'm very excited to do so. Um, and I'm sure more people will be trickling in, but they're lost if they're not here right now. Um, so my name is Evan Weber. Um, I've been in digital marketing since the late 1990s. Um, I've been part of some successful e-commerce companies. Uh, right now, I have an agency that does all types of internet marketing. We do um, everything from affiliate marketing to search marketing, social media. I do a lot of consulting. So if any of you need a, a consultant, let me know on any of your projects. And um, you know, this this time I wanted to cover a very uh, how should I say it? Um, just necessary topic. Um, I've I've done a lot of these speeches, and every time I try to cover something different, um, and you know, most of it has, it has to do with a different aspect of digital marketing, social media, affiliate, search, things of that nature, driving traffic. So, you know, this one this one is is really for people who want to know all the ways you can make money through digital marketing and internet marketing. And this, you know, this, this I feel like I'm particularly qualified to, to speak about because I've done most of these things in my career and I've observed people doing the rest more or less. So um, I'm gonna jump right into the first slide. But before we do that, um, if you want to tweet any of these points, you'll do so with hashtag ASC15. And the, uh, the Wi-Fi password is ASE um, on your phone, so make sure you're connected. Um, that's my Twitter handle, and that's my Instagram. So, but make sure to do a little bit of tweeting and make sure to use that hashtag if you do so. Okay, so, you know, the first, the first type of, of marketer is um, an affiliate marketer. So let's, let's just start there since we are at Affi Affiliate Summit and, and this is what most people here are here to learn about and here to, to do and meet people, network, et cetera. And you know, there's, there's many ways to be an affiliate marketer. And believe it or not, it's not just you know, a mommy blogger or a guy, you know, a webmaster in their basement. You know, big companies act as affiliate marketers. Um, they have inventory, they have users, they want to ex expose them to different offers, they want to monetize them. So the biggest of the big type of companies will act as an affiliate marketer all the way to a webmaster or a blogger that's just starting. So it's, it's pretty much an even playing field. Now the difference is you either have an audience or you don't. So over time what you want to do is build your audience. So I have some examples. Um, you know, WordPress is probably the easiest platform to use to publish content, and most uh, most of affiliate marketing that goes on the web, that goes on on the web is content based. So you want to have a a site or a blog that is very easy to publish content on, new, con new fresh content, articles, blog posts, etc. Um, so I, I have a um, a really nice uh, this this is one of my go to um, sites for finding. Themes. This is just a really nice theme that you can buy for like 30 or 40 bucks. And it, it, you know, they have all these different, you buy the theme, you know, themes have come a long way over the years. Um, back in the day, themes were kind of iffy. Um, you know, you could find good ones and you'd have to customize them. Now they're all mobile optimized. They're all ready for the phone. They're, they're modern. They're slick. They're coded well. It's really been a, you know, a renaissance in, in themes. So this, this company, uh, Invato Market, they, they have all types of, um, you know, this, this, is, this is actually a resource that I use quite a bit. You know, this one theme costs $58, but you can use it over and over and over again and just customize it to whatever a gardening blog, a, a car repair blog, a learning blog, whatever it may be. So theme, finding themes, using themes is, is part and parcel of creating great blogs. And you want a theme that you don't really have to mess around with the theme too much, so you can just focus on writing and publishing content. That's where you're gonna get traffic from, not from messing around with your, you know, your theme. So a lot of people fall into that trap. 
they, they mess around with their theme so much that it just kills all their time and productivity. So, you know, the next, once you have a nice theme, then of course you need plugins. So this is just a, and I'm gonna provide all these links and the links are all in the presentation and I've, there's some presentation notes that you can follow along, but all this is gonna be provided afterwards so you don't really need to like scribble down a whole bunch of things because it's all gonna be there for you later. So the plugin directory is where you're gonna find nice plugins for your blog, things to capture email address, um, providing um, you know, a Facebook widget on the side, um, Twitter widget. There are literally hundreds, thousands of themes that can provide different, different usages. Um, you can create a course on your blog, there's plugins for that. You can do so many wonderful things with your blog, it, it boggles the mind, it really does. And you can, you know, this, this shows you just, just the top plugins, you know, going now. Yoast is a really good theme. That's, a, that's an SEO theme that a lot of users have. So when you, when you go to this link, you'll see these are some of the more popular plugins that people use, bloggers. And you can use them just as easily. Uh, most of them are free, which is another fabulous thing about them. So you can, you can dig into the, to the plugins at your leisure. And here's, here are the presentation notes that you should have in front of you. But um, this is going to be available online afterwards, so you can refer back to it. So when you're, you know, when you're an affiliate marketer, obviously you want to affiliate with companies. So you know, this is just a list of, of some networks that are out there. Obviously there's Commission Junction, there's Linkshare, Amazon has an affiliate program, eBay has a nice affiliate, actually they just divested themselves of their affiliate program, but it's still running. It's just they sold it to another company because I guess they didn't want to deal with it because dealing with affiliates is logistically challenging. Let's just put it that way. And I don't think they're really set up to handle that, to be honest with you. And, you know, I know that I know that to be the case, but I won't, you know, get any more specific than that. Um, ClickBank is, is nice if you're looking for digital products, information products, ebooks, things of that nature. ClickBank's your go-to place. Commission Junction, in my opinion, uh, they should be number one. This is, this is a kind of an arbitrary list. I just used it because there aren't a lot of lists like this. But Commission Junction has over 3,000 companies on there you can affiliate with. So what happens is you join the network, and then you have to apply to each affiliate program you'd like to join, each company. And then they have the right to accept you or decline you. And if they decline you, don't take it personal. Either join a competitor of theirs or you know, email them and say, why did you decline me? I'm, I'm you know, a great potential affiliate, and let's do this. But they're... Every company on these networks has like someone in charge of it that may or may not know, even know what they're doing. So you'll, you'll get a lot of inconsistency with, when dealing with companies on these networks, but just you have to kind of power through that. Most companies are, are okay to work with, but there may be some hiccups you may experience along the way. Um, so one of the most popular types of affiliate sites are review sites. So review sites are cool because they, they usually rank well in Google. Um, this, is, this is a resource where it, it links to some nice templates that you can use as a reviewer. So you can create these little sites like this. Um, this is a cordless drill review site. I mean, you can get as granular as that. Most, I would say most affiliates don't get as granular as that. They, they will, they'll create like all the best dating sites. So they'll affiliate with eHarmony, Match.com, Date.com, plenty of fish. They'll affiliate with those companies and they'll create a site and say, okay, here's all the dating sites you can, if you're looking for a dating site, here are all the sites and they'll, you know, review them. And the, the only caveat I would throw in there as far as review sites is you don't want to create false or, or you know, conjured up reviews you, because that, that's frowned upon and you can actually get in the hot water if you falsely review a company or a product and say, oh, this is a great product, you know, I used it, but you never did, you can get in the hot water. So you say something like, um, you know, what a great product, and it has all these great features, and, but just don't claim to have ever used it. Um, now, if you have used it, then fine. And, and you can get into that with some companies. They will, they will actually send you products to review. You can re you, it, once you get some audience going on, you can go to some of the companies you're affiliating with and say, hey, I have, a, I have a blog and I'd like to review your product and they may send it to you for free and you blog about it, you link to them and it, that's basically you know, the nuts and bolts of the relationship and then you can see where it goes from there. But 
that's a nice thing you can do is get products to review from your merchants you're affiliating with. So email list building is very important. Um, you know, email is still one of the most uh, effective channels for driving revenue on the internet. So over time, as you get traffic, whether you're a merchant, an affiliate, you'll want to do things like pop-up email capture boxes, things of that nature. Um, you should always have an opt-in on your website, but sometimes it's not enough because people don't always, hold on. Um, people don't always opt in in a, in a static opt-in box. The, a pop-up email box, those are brilliant in my opinion, and, and a lot of the biggest companies use them, and affiliates use them too. Not as much as they probably should, but, wait, where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. Um, AWeber is probably the most popular email tool. Um, this is a nice one. This is Mad Mini. Mad Mini is an email tool. Um, and this is just a resource, 22 cool tools to help you build your email list. So you're going you're gonna to look at this resource later and you're going to see what you can use on your own websites. So that's a really nice resource right there. So, you know, when you, when you talk about social networking and affiliate marketing, they really go hand in hand because you want to grow your Twitter followers, you want to grow your Facebook page likes, um, you definitely want to create followings wherever you're doing your social networking thing, uh, LinkedIn, all these venues are places where you can be sharing your affiliate links, whatever they may be. If it's LinkedIn, it's going to be more business, what they call B2B. Um, Twitter, Facebook, things of that nature, it's going to be more B2C, which is more consumer-oriented stuff. So, but become a prolific social networker. It will only behoove you to do so. And, and by doing that, you need to do things like, like other people's posts, comment, add connections, and, and be proactive with your social networking, and people will, will reciprocate. And that's, that's what I call social karma. Um, when you proactively interact with your connections stuff and then they then all of a sudden you see them liking your stuff And that's going to make your stuff go more viral than it would normally so sweepstakes are Phenomenal sweepstakes are probably the best way to grow your audience the quickest because everyone likes entering sweepstakes and Usually there's no barrier to entry. So it's like win an iPad click here to enter like our page enter your email address wonderful now, when, you, when they like it, their friends will see it because you use an app, um, a Facebook app that, that facilitates that. There's a couple of them out there. Woobox is probably the, the most uh, commonly used one. It's also really cheap. It's 29 bucks a month to run a paid, con uh, a paid contest or, or sweepstakes. And they're just, these are some um, you know, current promotions they're running. You know, it's as simple as that. Well, I'm not logged in here, so you're not seeing exactly, but you know, win these fantastic prizes, complete the form below to enter. That's a little bit of a more advanced um, form, but a lot of times they're as simple as just like our page, enter, you see here, like peel, see I'm not logged in, so that would, if I was logged in, I could just click that. This is gonna prompt me to log in. And then enter your email address, enter. So when you enter, you have to authorize Facebook to connect with the, with the sweepstakes app because that's what Woobox does. It uses, a, it's, it's a Facebook app that asks, asks the users to connect their Facebook account to it. 80% of people do this, okay? 20% are like, eh, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but the majority do, and when they do, that's what allows it to go viral because when you enter the contest, your friends will see that. And then you can invite friends and gain bonus entries. You can get bonus entries for tweeting the contest, things like that, so you can make it more incentivized of a contest when you use a Facebook app to run your sweepstakes. Companies that, that run sweepstakes and don't use an, a Facebook app are completely missing the boat in my opinion. But sometimes they do because they, they want to control it and they don't want to have that authorization, but, but it's, it's a problem in my opinion to not use it. So, you know, the bottom line is with affiliate marketing, it's a volume game. It's growing your audience, it's sharing the links, getting people to click them, dropping that cookie in the browser, growing your email list, sending offers to them, great deals, discounts. And when you're an affiliate on the big networks, you know, the companies will send you deals to share. They'll say, okay, this, this week it's 20% off hardware. Next week it's 30% off betting, you know, whatever it is. And you can take that deal and then just send it out to your audience. 
post it on Facebook, tweet it, create a blog post, tweet that, share that, send it to your email list. And it just becomes a thing you just do. Uh, over time, you get comfortable with the process. So the, the, the next type of way to make money through the web is by referring businesses to businesses. I do a lot of this because I've been, um, you know, I've been on LinkedIn for years and I have a lot of connections. So it's, it's, for me, it's second nature to partner with companies that, you know, want business and they want other companies to do business with. So if I know, you know, a company that, you know, has a software product, for instance, let's say they're doing, um, you know, a marketing automation thing where they send email, automated emails to people, to customers. So they're looking for, cus for businesses to use their tool. So I'll look in my database and I'll say, okay, who do I know that could use this tool? And I refer them, either through a link or through an introduction. And I'll get 20% of the revenue that's created. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably partnered with 30 or 40 companies in this way as just a straight up referrer. And either it's through a link they create for me, a dedicated link that says, you know, such and such web address slash Evan Weber, and I share that link and it tracks the referrals back to me, or we just keep track of it in a spreadsheet. The problem with keeping track of it in a spreadsheet is you lose some of the online tracking. So, but it breaks down a little bit and you have to follow up and say, listen, I referred you five people, how many went? You know, how many bought? And then there's a little bit of a logistical issue there but it, it definitely can be done. So, you know, I, I link here to some, some great business-oriented referral programs. And, and you'll, like I said, you'll have access to this later. But these are all, these are 47 B2B. These are all business-oriented referrals. There's Dropbox, PayPal, Airbnb. See, there's a pop-up email capture. Exactly what I'm talking about. You need this. Um, so there's, there's a list of 47 companies here that are all looking for business referrers. And, and, you know, this makes a lot of sense if you have, you know, a lot of connections, business connections. Even if you have, let's say, a couple hundred, it can still work. Obviously, if you have a couple thousand, it, it can work a little better. Um, so always be growing your connections, your LinkedIn network, adding sending invites, using their automated invite tools to grow your connections, very important. Um, you know, posting, once you, so once you get into a referral agreement with, some, with a company, then you go and make a post on your blog, on your LinkedIn blog, LinkedIn has a blog for all the users, on your website, your blog, your LinkedIn, you know, hey everyone, do you need, eBay, do you need to process payments? Check out PayPal. You know, they're the, one of the leaders in payment processing, blah, blah, blah use your referral link, publish a post, and then share it. It's as simple as that. And then just, again, it's about volume. You know, you have to do a lot of them to get a good effect. You know, sending intro emails. Hey, hey, um, you know, hey, Dean, I'd like to introduce you to James. He does this, you do that. I thought you guys could make some money together. I do a lot of that. The problem with that is you don't always see your money out of that when you refer business because it isn't track it isn't always tracked as well as as it would be if it was a click through happening and it was electronic tracking but but listen you you can't expect it to always be a perfect tracking scenario so you kind of just have to work with it and, and see what happens and usually the you, in all in all honesty a lot of those do break down because you don't have that you know, that reporting to see what's actually going on, who you've referred, how much they've spent, what your percentage is. Where you can see those numbers, it, it lends more to the, you know, it encourages you more because you see your money coming in, and so it propels you to do more. Um, let's see, you know, be the person people look to for ideas. Um, this is important, this is something I try to do. I try to share valuable content. I try to write valuable content and then share it with my connections. People know that I'm going to be sort of curating content about digital marketing. They wanna follow me because if you follow me, you're gonna learn about what Google's doing, what Facebook's doing, what LinkedIn's doing, what X, Y, and Z are doing. And people who are into those type things, they, they look for my posts because they know they're gonna be staying on the cutting edge because I'm trying to keep them on the cutting edge. Um, and, you know, be pro prolific. Um, you know, it's a volume game. You need to post frequently. People or companies that post numerous times a day get more traffic. 
If you post one time a week, don't expect much traffic. If you post 10 times a day, you can expect to see some free traffic coming in for, for wherever it may be. So the third way to make money online is becoming a merchant, okay? And over time, you know, this has gotten a lot easier for people. People can use platforms like Shopify, and it's a cloud-based storefront. There's others, but I love Shopify, and they're kind of leading the, uh, leading the pack. Because what, what happens is when it's cloud-based and they update their, their systems and, their, and their, the dashboard and the platform, your, your dashboard updates, your, everything you're doing updates. Back in the day, you would have to update your server with the latest software, and it was, it was a logistical nightmare, and you needed tech people to do it. Now you don't need any IT people to update your infrastructure of your store. It's all being done automatically through the cloud. So Shopify is... If you have products to sell, I would highly encourage you to use Shopify. It's cheap, it's effective, it's, they have great, um, great plugins, things like that to add functionality. Um, you know, so email list building and pop-ups and automation are key to growing e-commerce sales and as a merchant because you know, a lot of people will come to an e-commerce website and they'll leave without buying. In fact, 97% of people that go to a website that are looking to possibly buy, don't buy, okay? So you have to do things to capture their information. And pop-ups is one of them. You see a little pop-up box popping up. Another way is through what's called automation or marketing automation, which is basically drip emailing them after you get their email until they buy. So you can set up automated emails to go out seven days, 14 days, 21 days, whatever interval you want after you get their email address until they buy. Then when they buy, you put them into a different automation stream that, sell, that, that sells them additional products or complementary products. And that's called marketing automation. And that's, that's very popular these days. And it, it grows business in itself. So let me uh, show you that real quick. These are some of the top auto, uh, marketing automation softwares. Um, Pardo, these, Pardot is, is, is a Salesforce product. It's, it's a little bit more advanced, I would say, for bigger sales departments. And then you get into things like Infusionsoft, which is very popular. So you're going to see all these different marketing automation. And, you know, AWeber is, is a marketing automation platform in itself. So if you're, if you're just a, an affiliate or a blogger, you'll want to just use AWeber to uh, set up your drip email campaigns. They let people opt in, they verify the opt in, and then they, you can drip email them whatever you want. So website apps are the, the funnest part of modern e-commerce because it lets you plug in so much functionality to your store, it just boggles the mind. Um, so here's the, the Shopify app store. And, you know, it's, it's brilliant because they, they show you the popular apps. These are all apps, you know, so there's a better, you know, better coupon box. It's a pop-up box. You know, you can customize the receipt. Um, the receipt box um, after the, the purchase is made. There's just so many, there's, there's SEO plugins, sales plugins, you know, recurring billing, social media plugins. These are all plugins you can install into your own store with one click. Back in the day, this just wasn't possible. Five, 10 years ago even, you just, you had to code a thing. You had to pay someone, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to build something for your website. Now you just pay a company 10 bucks a month and it, it installs with one click. It's, it's phenomenal. So if you are selling online, you're going to want to look through the apps and there's literally hundreds of them. You have to pick through them. There's, you know, re customer referral apps and, you know, pop-up boxes and affiliate program apps and there's just process, you know, shipping apps, and there's just so many different types of apps you can use for your store. It's a very exciting time in e-commerce. Um, so mobile websites are very important because, you know, 70% of people that shop online are shopping on their phone now. So your website or your store needs to be very mobile friendly. Um, in fact, Google has said that if you don't have a mobile friendly website, you're going to lose traffic, and it's already proving to be the case. So whether it's a blog or a store, it needs to be, you know, on your phone. It should, it should work exactly on your phone as it does on, on the desktop. And the experience should be the same. They should be able to browse the, the catalog. They should be able to check out very easily without having to go like this. And, you know, if they have to zoom in on your website on their phone, you're losing people immediately and you're, it's killing your conversion rate. Um, 
so, you know, mobile apps are mobile apps are kind of separate than a mobile website. Mobile apps are things like Uber. You know, Twitter has a mobile app, Facebook, some of the game app. These are these are apps that live on your phone that run independently, and you can build one for your company or your store. And you know, mobile is where it's at. There's no if ands or buts about it. Mobile is everything. In fact, it's it's replacing desktop. Desktop is going away quickly. Mobile is already take, it's pretty much taken over already, but there's still some growth to be had. So if you're gonna do anything online, you should be doing it in mobile, in my opinion, or at least weaving that into the mix. Um, you know, as an online merchant, you wanna find lots of affiliates and referral partners, and you, you need to hunt them down. And you can find them on the networks, affiliate networks. You can use tools to find bloggers that you might want to work with. You, you send them an email. Hi, I found your blog. It's great. We'd love to have you as an affiliate, that type thing. And so you grow your own affiliate program as a merchant. And that, that brings you revenue and, and traffic. It diversifies your traffic and your revenue streams. So you can, you can then grow your own affiliate program and do that. Um, drop ship, drop ship. Um, oh, the, I just, oh, so finding vendors. Yeah, I did, I did, thank you. Um, so finding vendors, that's actually gotten easier because in order to sell products online, you need, you need products, you need vendors. And this, this is a nice resource because this will break it down for you. They've made, they've actually created apps that let you choose products other companies sell and sell them on your own site and they ship them for you and you just keep the spread. Um, that's, that's being done a lot um, in the clothing industry. You can create your own t-shirt line, your own hats, shirts, etc. And you never have to stock a thing. You sell them on your website and when the order comes in, you, you transact with, the mer with your merchant account that, that Shopify provides and the, the order automatically goes to the drop shipper. They create the product and they ship it to the customer. That's called shipping on demand or print on demand. So that's huge right now in, um, in, in e-commerce. That'll allow you to have a store without having any products in stock or in a warehouse. So that's, that's where you wanna go, in my opinion. That's very big. Um, yeah, thank you for catching that. Um, so let's talk about lead generation because lead generation is very exciting. It's it's kind of like the um, the the twin planet, you know, of 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 you know, if Earth was, you know, Venus would be the uh, lead generation twin sister of Earth because you know a lot of business goes on through e-commerce and and product sales online, but then again, there's also people who are looking for insurance, remodeling, you know, there's there's so many different verticals that you can generate leads, different type of business softwares. Um, there's people looking for a new roof. I, I do a lot in, in remodeling and, and home improvement, so the, those are the things that are popping to mind right now. But the, you know, fundraising for, for schools, you know, these, are, these are websites you can create where they just capture people's interest in insurance, remodeling, fundraising, for example. And then once the person submits their information, you sell the information to a company that does that. So you sell the information to an insurance company. Um, so you partner with insurance companies, and I'm just gonna use this as an example. So let's say you, you partner with an insurance company in Florida, and you, you start creating content about getting health insurance in Florida, or any type of insurance. People come to the site and they fill out a form for more information. You take that information, you sell it to the insurance company for 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 plus dollars per lead. So a lead is really a contact form that's been submitted on a website saying they're interested in more information. And this is, you know, leads drive sales for businesses. So sales departments, companies that use salespeople are always hungry for leads. They will never not be, ever. They are, they're, right now, they're, they're desperate for leads, in fact. And because of that, they're willing to pay a lot for them. A lot of times these leads can result in thousands of dollars in revenue for the company, so they're willing to pay hundreds of dollars to obtain the sales lead. Then they turn it over to their sales department and those people get after it. And when the, the leads close, they get the business. So you can cultivate a lead campaign in, in many different industries. There are literally thousands of different types of businesses that want leads. Obviously you can't do all of them, but you can find some niche ones that you can exploit. Let's say you know someone 
like an insurance agent or a contractor, a general contractor that you know, does roofing, let's say. You create a site, you know, roof, roofing in New York City, okay? You, you create some content, you blog about it. People come there and they, you, you put a form on your website that says you need more information, click here. They fill out the form and you sell the lead to the contractor. And once you have that system set up, you can then advertise for traffic in Google, Bing, Facebook, places like that and generate leads and then sell the leads and keep the spread. And that's, that's gold right there in my opinion. Um, so, you know, a lot of these things already touched on, but, um, you know, things that are very important are retargeting, the concept. Um, this, so this is where you advertise to the people that have come to your website when they leave the website without having submitted the information. Then you can show them your ads when they surf around the web. That's a phenomenal thing to do. Companies like AdRoll, um, perfect audience. If you can do it directly with Facebook, Google does it. So, um, you know, thank you page placements. This is where after a person submits their information, they hit a page that says, thank you for contacting us. You may be interested in this or this. So instead of just the, per just the, the thing dying there, you're, you're hitting with more offers on the thank you page after they submit their contact information. So that's another way to monetize your traffic. And, and if you can do that, you may be able to find other people that will do it for you with your offer and you can reciprocate. So that's, that's brilliant. Um, let me just check time. So monetizing your list is is important concept because once you generate leads, you're creating a list. You're creating an email list, a, databa a database, a postal database, phone numbers, email addresses of people that were interested in a certain type of, you know, lead type or type of service. And then once that grows, you can email blast them all. You can upload them into Facebook and then run ads to that list. You can do it with Twitter as well. So once you create a database, you can then advertise to that database and send other types of offers or products to that database. And that's called monetizing your list in a nutshell. And then when you, when you do generate leads, you can sell them on either a shared basis, which is multiple people buying the same lead. And this is very common, although it sounds a bit... Um, you know, uh, sketchy, it's really not because let's say you generate an insurance lead in New York City, you sell it to three insurance agents, they all get after that person and they all try to sell them a policy and one of them is going to probably sell the policy and you've made, you know, you've sold that lead three times for $30 each so you've made $90 and then one of them is going to create business out of that. It just, it just works numbers wise for everyone in the end. And then exclusive means you, share, you sell the lead once. So you sell one insurance lead for $50 instead of shared for 30, for instance. And then you just get more money for an exclusive lead. That means no other buyer will, will see that data. That's an exclusive lead relationship. And some companies want that and some don't care. Um, and in order to get exclusive leads, you need to, they need to be willing to pay more. So let's move on to the fifth way. So this is just becoming an affiliate manager. How exciting, working with affiliates, something I've done for 15 years. Um, I love doing it because I love affiliates and I know how to be an affiliate and what they go through, so I'm fairly um, tailored to, to the job, but um, you know, anyone can learn how to do this. It re it's really simple. It's, it's all about how, to, how do you pull the links? How do you pull the banner code? How do you place it on your website or your blog? How do you check your statistics? These are all, this is a finite skill set that anyone could really learn. And you, can, you, you go into Commission Junction, you go into LinkShare, whatever platform the, the, the program is running on, and you, you master how to use it from an, the affiliate side. When you're an affiliate manager, you, you have your own advertiser dashboard. So you have to learn how to manage that. And then you need to learn how the affiliate goes through the experience so you can help them. And then when they need help, you can help them and that's basically what an affiliate manager does. There's a big demand for this out there. Everyone, every company that runs an affiliate program needs a good affiliate manager and they're very hard to find, let me tell you. And that's part of why I went into the affiliate management agency space um, eight years ago is because I saw the need and I saw how horrible it was being handled by a lot of agencies and a lot of affiliate managers and I just knew I could do it better 
but it's not you know rocket science. I've written articles and you know about how to just specifically how to go about it. So if you read my articles, you can go and do this with a little bit of training and experience. You can you can be an effective affiliate manager, and you know these these other um, you know you can work for affiliate networks. You can work for lead platforms. You can work as an affiliate recruiter, which is basically just prospecting people online and asking them if they'd like to be an affiliate of such and such company. And there's tools to help you facilitate that and handle that. So there's many roles that you could work as in the affiliate management um, field. And so there are jobs out there right now, as we speak, for this. Um, and, but, I, you know, again, it, it's, it's, it's something you have to put a lot of love into, in my opinion. There's, there's affiliate managers that are just like, um, okay, here's your link, have a nice day. That's not how I think it should be handled, but that's the bare bones way to handle it. And you could be analyzing their website, providing feedback. You could be sharing resources with them, tools. You could really be trying to help them as an affiliate become a better affiliate, and that's what a real affiliate manager is, in my opinion. Anyone could become that if they tried to learn it you know, well enough or were trained by the right person. So a social media manager, you know, this, this is also a very in-demand position right now because every company needs a social media manager. This is the person that manages your Facebook page, your Twitter account, your Instagram account, possibly your Pinterest account. There's a, there's, there's a finite number of social networks that need to be managed for every company. So first there's actually managing the page or the Twitter account. This is posting, making posts, answering people, keeping the conversation going, being a good advocate for the company, and being a very friendly social media, you know, social media manager on behalf of the company. There are jobs out there right now for this. Um, so you need, and, and then the other aspect, the other side of it is actually running the advertising, running ads on Facebook for likes, for traffic, boosting posts, running, running ads to your database. That's called custom audiences. There's probably 10 different ways to advertise on Facebook, but I don't want to like overwhelm you with, with that. But just to know that those are probably the core ways. But once you learn the ways, you'll, you'll look like a rock star. Once you learn how to run ads on there effectively, running ads on Facebook is brilliant if you're running it prop, if you're doing it properly. Once you learn how to do it, you're a very in-demand individual, in my opinion, because that's a very big need. Companies look at the look at the, the Facebook advertising platform, and they're like, what? They don't know where to start. It's kind of like Google AdWords. Um, it's like you log into Google AdWords, and you're like, OK. Um, now, if you know how to use platforms like these, it's second nature to you. But they keep evolving, and they keep adding features, so you have to stay on top of it. Um, you know, something that's very important to being a social media manager is running sweepstakes, like we talked about earlier, and running frequent sweepstakes. In my opinion, I always say, if you're not running a sweepstakes, you don't have a social media strategy. Because sweeps, nothing grows social exposure like a sweepstakes. People love sweepstakes, they see their friends enter, they enter, they give you their email, they like the page, it grows your list, it grows your likes, and it just, there's nothing more effective to growing your social exposure than running sweepstakes. Um, and then, of course, there's measuring social media effectiveness. This is, this is doing things like running coupon codes, doing, a, doing an ad on Facebook and seeing how many orders come in, advertising for likes and then doing a boosted post and seeing how many sales come in. So companies want to measure their social media advertising. It's just a little harder than it is on, in the search engines, for instance, because you have to use codes. You have to use tracking links things like that, um, special limited time offers. Use coupon code Facebook for a 20% off deal. Then you look and see how many people use code Facebook when they purchased, and you can say, oh, okay, we spent $500 adding more likes, we did a boosted post, we spent $50 more, and we got $300 in sales, so okay, it almost broke even, but it's, it's getting there. So you can start to get your ROI on your, your social advertising by doing things like that. So, um, you know, when you're a social media manager, you want to be awesome. You want to be proactive. There's nothing worse than a boring ass social media manager, in my opinion, because it's all about being happy and friendly and, you know, bringing value to, to them, 
sharing helpful resources, articles, brightening up their day. Um, there's a statistic, a statistic I saw recently. You know, they, people want to see like motivational messages are very good to share when you're managing a page. You know, brightening up their day. There's nothing worse than negativity on social networks. So bring some light, bring some positivity to to the social experience if you're managing a page on behalf of a company or your own stuff. You know, bring joy to them, bring great deals to them, and they'll. You'll, you'll get the response. Now, that being said, if you don't boost your posts on Facebook, for instance, you won't get a lot of engagement. But if you do boost your posts, you'll get a ton of engagement. So that's kind of how they've, had it, they've set it up to make their money. Um, but don't be afraid of boosting posts because the engagement goes through the roof when you boost it. And you can also get additional likes to the page if you boost it to a, uh, a targeted audience as opposed to the fans or, the, or their fans and their friends. So you can, you can boost a few different ways. And get a good and measure, you know, and see what what results. And do it really inexpensively: twenty here, ten here, fifty here, and and you know, piecemeal your way to greatness. Um, you know, running communities and groups, forums, face, you know, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups. These are all things that take management. They take moderation. It's not for someone who just wants to set it and forget it. You have to really work these things. But if you do it, it will pay dividends. I run, a, I run an affiliate group with 28,000 people in it. I've had it for about six years, and it just grows organically now. And, you know, I can email blast that list once a week, whatever I want, and it's really powerful. Um, and so if you grow that type of audience that way, you can, it's just another list to blast or another place to post your content and, you know, control what goes on there. So it's nice. Um, and, you know, monetization strategies, we've talked about some of them, email blasting offers, custom audiences, running promotional codes to the audience and seeing how many sales come in and measuring it. These are monetization strategies that a social media manager, let me tell you, social media managers are super in demand right now. If you can just, and I have articles on how to do this, how to be a rock star social media manager. Um, so I can refer you to some of those and then I'm convinced I can get you a job as a social media manager because they're just so in demand, it's ridiculous. And it's really not that hard once you know technique. So this is, you know, media buying is, um, it's a little bit of a, um, I don't call it an albatross. Um, you know, there's definitely people who focus on media buying. And these are people that buy ads on the search engines or Facebook. And then they get paid on a performance basis on the back end. So they spend their own money a lot of times for the traffic. And then they make the affiliate payout on the back end. They try to make a spread. Not easy, but definitely possible. It takes a lot of trial and error, a lot of seeing what works, what doesn't, trying many things, weeding through what doesn't, doesn't work, getting rid of it, keeping what does, and moving forward. Um, so you can, you can buy media on all the, uh, on, on the search engines, on Facebook, on Twitter. Then there's buying display ads, which, um, which is called pr programmatic ad buying. These are, these are networks where you can buy ads, display ads to people who fit certain demographics and certain behaviors online. Like you can, you can target people that, like for instance, have bought from a jewelry site in the past. So if you're a jewelry company and you wanna target people that have a history of buying from jewelry websites in New York City, you can target those people through a thing like programmatic ad buying. This is, a, it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but it's definitely possible because it's coming more uh, to, the, to, to um, the mainstream. You don't have to be a big agency to buy these type of ads anymore. So there's definitely, you, I mean, you can buy ads like this on Facebook right now. You can say, I want to buy, you know, people who are into, you know, affiliate marketing that live in New York City that are of the age of 30 to 40 that, you know, all these different target that are males that make, you know, 50000 a year in, 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 in uh, salary. So you can get really um, granular with the targeting. Facebook has phenomenal targeting. So you can buy ads like that. Um, let's see, cultivating affiliate relationships. Yeah, listen, if you're buying media as a performance media buyer, you need to get your higher, highest payout possible. So if you're just making, you know, 5%, it may just not cut it. So you need to go say, listen, I'm, I'm spending money to drive traffic to your offer. Can you go 10? Can you go 15? A lot of the, a lot of times affiliate com or companies that run affiliate programs, they pay out like the lowest they think they need to pay out to get people interested. And they, they, they have much more margin to work with. You just have to ask them for it, especially if you can show a little bit of success and say, listen, I drove you some revenue. Can you increase my commission? And they'll be like, okay, sure. 
And if they say no, say, okay, then I'm going to go to your competitor. And then I bet they change their mind real quick. Um, and it's just a technique that is very easy to use. Um, and they break down very quickly. Um, and then you can, you can do it with email traffic too. There's a lot of email lists you can buy um, out there, dropping emails to different types of lists. And you, you can do it on behalf of a company. You can coordinate it for the company. So th this is a role. This is called the media buyer. And companies hire these people to go find traffic and sources of revenue on these basis that, that I've covered here. It's a little bit, like I said, it's a little bit murky because they all kind of take on a different role. And it's not that defined. But it definitely is a role that companies use to get more traffic. Let me see how we're doing on time. Okay, I uh, have to go a little quicker. Um, and I'm, I'm available afterwards if you want to ask me anything. Um, so, okay, so search engine expert. You know, every company needs a search engine expert. They're either doing it in-house or they're hiring an agency. And you can work as what's called an SEO, which is someone who is an, is an expert on search engine optimization. This is really about you know, re-optimizing the website to get at better rankings, adding more content to the website to hit on more subjects so you get more free traffic through that strategy. So it's, it's, just, it's never done. Your SEO is never done as a company, so you always need someone focusing on it, whether it's creating new content for the blog, re-optimizing current pages on the site to get more traffic. A lot of times companies will have good rankings, and if they just go and re-optimize the pages on their website, they can get more traffic by just including more content on those pages with certain search phrases on them that, that they're not containing right now. So if they add those phrases, those pages can work more for you and get you more traffic for free if you just re-optimize them and add more content. Um, you know, managing paid search is a huge profession online, and, and there's, it's very in demand as well. And that's Google AdWords, Bing Ads. Those are managing keyword campaigns and, and, Google sh and, and uh, shopping campaigns for companies. And these are you know, phrase-driven campaigns, you know, searching for a phrase. Your ad comes up. It goes to a certain page on the site or the home page. And, and listen, there's, there's no shortage of, of a need for, for search engine experts out there. And it's not something that's not learnable. It's very, it's, I wouldn't call it easy to master search engine optimization, but it's, it's definitely possible in, in a short amount of time without going to, you know, paying a bunch of money or going to call, you know, university for it. Um, you can learn these techniques and then you can go work for a company and, and get paid a nice salary for doing so. Um, and then, of course, there's generating traffic with content. That's, again, that's SEO. Um, inbound marketing is, is interesting. This is using things like info, infographics, a graphic that has a representation of statistics and you know, it conveys a certain message. And you know, also white papers about a topic, eBooks. Th this is what you call inbound marketing. This is where you, know, you know, learn five ways to manage your social media, white paper. People go there and they click to download the white paper. And when they do so, they have to fill out a little form. And usually that's done to create leads, sales leads, for whatever company's putting out the, the white paper or the ebook or the webinar. And, and it's a very common tactic for, for companies, usually selling a service. Granted, it's not consumer focused usually, it's usually business to business type stuff. But there's you know, inbound marketing, you know, go, go look it up at, you know, uh, on, at, your, at your leisure and you'll see that it's a very big thing that's going on and it's kind of like never, never done, never big enough. So you can, you can get into the game with inbound marketing. And then you know, managing search engine uh, shopping engines. They're called the CSEs, comparative shopping sites. These are sites like Google Shopping, Bing Shopping, Shopping.com, um, Become.com. There's literally probably 50 of them. But um, the ones that work well are Google Shopping, Bing, Bing Shopping. And, and this is getting a, a, an e This is for e-commerce. This is not anything but e-commerce. This is a company with a product catalog getting the product catalog listed with Google Shopping and Bing Shopping and managing that. And that's, that's a job in itself. That usually falls under the search engine expert cap. So the ninth way is, is having a digital agency. This is, this is what I do. Um, and let me tell you, it's not, it's not easy, but I enjoy it. And it, you know, it's fairly prosperous um, of a thing to do. And so what you, need to, what you would do here is you would 
handle these responsibilities, these marketing and advertising responsibilities for companies, whether they be local, a hairdresser, a florist, or the biggest of the big. And you, you go in there and you say, okay, we can manage your search engine accounts better. We can manage your Facebook accounts, and they hire you to do so. So you've just launched your own agency. Once you educate yourself on how to do it, of course, I wouldn't recommend doing it without going through a lot of pro, pro, you know, possibly trial and error on your own, on your own behalf. Um, but all the content's out there that you can learn from. So there's, there's an array, array of services you could provide, or you could focus on one thing. And then you have to find clients. You can advertise for them. I run ads on Google and Bing and Facebook uh, for companies looking for agencies. And there's a lot of companies, believe it or not, just Googling that. Digital agency. Finding a digital agency. Finding a search engine agency. Finding a social media agency. These are the phrases I advertise under. And I, they're, they're not that competitive. They're somewhat competitive, but you'd be surprised. Not as competitive as you would think. And once you, once, and you, so you can do that locally or you can do it nationally. And probably people that haven't done it before, I would suggest locally. That way you can, you can get with a company and say, look, we can do these things for you. It's gonna cost you, you know, $500 a month for this service, and you're gonna, they have to have a budget as well to spend. So there's an agency fee and then a budget for advertising, and then you make the advertising work for them, or not. Um, a lot of agencies don't, but if, you're, if you know what you're doing, you can make it work. Um, but there's a lot that goes into it. You know, this is a little bit more of an advanced type of thing to do, um, but I wanted to bring it up because, or put it in here because it's, it's a big industry and there's a lot of need for it but for companies. They all, they, a lot of companies want to hire agencies to help with their marketing and advertising. So keep it in the back of your mind. Um, building your personal brand. That's kind of like, you know, Evan Weber, um, you know, internet marketing expert. Okay, so I want to work with this guy because they've seen my articles, they've seen my videos, they've seen I speak here, I speak there, I put all my content out there. So that's, that's called building your personal brand. Once you do that, it'll bring you business. People just come to me now because they see me around, they see my stuff and they, they like what they see, so they wanna hire me. So I consider myself blessed to be in that position and I, I, I strive to live up to it. And, and over time, it's taken me years, but now I finally, and it's never done. You know, I do a lot of press releases, online press releases. I, you know, post a lot. I, sh I help people, and it comes back eventually. Um, you know, showcasing your work and um, is important. If you have clients and you do a good job for them, show it. Here's a case study. Here's what we did for such and such company. That goes a long way. And then we talked about local versus um, national. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, business for agencies on the local front because there aren't a lot of good local agencies. And so if you become a little agency and you can go do search for them or social media for them, every company needs search and social media. You can't tell me a company that doesn't need one of those, both of those things done really well. If they tell you they don't, then they're complete idiots because you always need a great search engine strategy to get more traffic, targeted traffic, and you need a good social media strategy to interact and build your audience. So there is, there is upside there for, for everyone. So the last, um, the last way to do it is um, courses. Um, courses are phenomenal. I sit back and I, I see people that are complete idiots making money with a course, okay? They create their own little course about how to teach other people how to make a course. It'd make you sick if you knew how much of that was going on. Um, but the courses I like are, you know, how to do, how to be a coder, how to be a search engine manager, how to be a social media manager. These are the type of courses I, I, I come up with. But they, they could be anything, how to design websites, how to be a graphic designer, how to plan events, how to, you know, a course could be constructed for how to do anything. You may have heard that LinkedIn just bought a course company for a couple billion dollars that only started a few years ago. Online courses are absolutely huge. Um, I, the links I have here are to, um, and you'll be able to click these later, but we're kind of running out of time. Um, they, they'll show you where to create your course, examples of courses, what platforms to use, I have in here, you know, create courses for experts. If you know someone who's an expert in a field, go to them and say, listen, let's create a course. 
Okay, I'll help you create it. And what you do is our screen, screen captures. We're called screen captures. So you take people, kind of like what we're doing here. You take people through a walkthrough, and you say, okay, check this out, then check that out. And you have to script it, and you have to storyboard it. But once you do, you can then take them to all the necessary resources and record, record the, a screen capture as a video. And that actually becomes the course content. So in, in, in week one, it's, it's how to set up your business. Week two, it's how to, you know, how to launch you know, your course, how to, how to find your audience. There's, you can create the eight-week course or however many weeks it is. And the, all the tools are out there. Um, for creating courses, and then you have to market the course, of course, but you have to um, put money into advertising it. And what you do is you say, okay, sign up for this free article on how to do such and such. Once they give you their email address, then you use the marketing automation to drip email those people the course. If you really want to learn how to be an event planner or how to design a website, it's going to cost you $495. And you, so you're selling them, and then after they've completed the course, then you can do what's called coach them, which means you're going to provide extra support to them to learn the subject, and it's going to cost them $99 a month. And that's how you build up a residual business from a course. And that, that is, in my opinion, huge upside, and anyone can do it that has, you know, how to, be a, how to garden, how, I mean, there's so many possible topics for creating courses, it just boggles the mind. And, and there's just a lot, people love buying courses, let me tell you. I have a friend, um, she's bought like 20 or 30 courses on marketing and she doesn't even use this, the information. She just like signs up for these courses, pays the money, goes through the course, and then goes and finds another course and does that one. And you know, now she's doing her own course, not on how to do courses, but how to you know, market, you know, her thing is how to, how to be a marketer or whatever, but she's done a, like a series of online courses and she may use one point from this one, one point from that one. And each course is, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars. She spent a you know, a nice amount of money on these courses. It just underlines the fact that people love taking courses online. So try to get into the course business. If it kills you, it, you will make money. Go to these resources. Um, and uh, you will, you'll be enlightened and you'll say, oh, you know, there's people out there that teach you how to teach others to do a course, okay? <laughs> a course to teach others how to do a course. And it, to me, it's a little bit, you know, nauseating, but um, you would be shocked if you knew how many people were just doing that type of course. And, but I like the courses that will teach you like a, a solid subject, how to be an expert in something. Once you become an expert, you can teach others how to become an expert, and they can teach others, and so on and so forth. And that's what the course thing is all about. So those are the 10 ways. Oh my gosh, we're done. Um, wow. Um, any questions real quick? We don't have much time, but. How do we, how do we get your presentation? This, this presentation, how do we get the presentation? This presentation is, Affiliate Summit has this published on SlideShare. You just go to the Affiliate Summit um, SlideShare account and you can get this presentation. This, th the notes that were handed out, that, that I can email you. I'll put that online as well. And um, I'm, I'm available to, to discuss any of these things with you either now or in the future. Send me an email. Um, actually, here's my information. Um, shoot me an email, give me a call, text me, whatever. Um, connect with me. Any any other quick questions? Well, we yeah. Uh, other than the, um, the Shopify. Shopify. Uh, the, um, for, uh, uh, really the, uh, yeah, Shopify. It's it's you can plug apps into Shopify to to connect with the drop shipping companies through the apps. Like the, the print-on-demand products, there's, there's an app, and you, there's one called Printful, and you, you connect with it, and then you create your designs, and they, you know, as you sell the products, they print it and ship it for you on demand. And you take the money, and they get their percentage automatically. So it's that type of thing. Yeah. Links, links is... Oh, click. Um, the question is, is there a less expensive way than Google or Bing? 
You know, it depends on the vertical. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit, you know, on Bing. A lot of companies don't advertise on Bing in Bing ads. So there is cheap traffic in Bing. Um, retargeting visitors that, that come to the site after they leave the site is inexpensive advertising inventory. You can advertise through banner ads and through Facebook ads. You can also do it on, on Twitter. And, and so that's inexpensive inv um, inventory. To, and that targets people that have already, you've already driven to the website. So they're highly converting type of people. So there's, a, um, you know, you have to look around and, you know, there's email campaigns you can do with certain companies. And just, you have to have a well converting website in order to make any of that work. We didn't really get into conversion rate or anything, one of my passions. But, um, you know, whenever you buy advertising, if your website doesn't convert them very well, it's going to break down immediately. So you have to do things like running pop-ups, like retargeting the visitors, um, having the right apps, live chat, call today, you know, really making your site engaging. Otherwise, you drive traffic there, they leave, and you lose money. So you really have to do a, a great job of converting traffic when you drive it to the site. What share of my traffic does it provide? Well, you're right. I mean, Google has 80% of the search traffic, but most companies can't even buy all their search traffic. It's just too costly on Google. So they need to, you need to be maximizing Bing first. Bing runs on Bing and Yahoo and the sponsor results. So there's, there's a plenty of traffic there for most companies or individuals. You could, you could spend you know, hundreds of dollars a day there, if not thousands, if it's a big enough vertical. You have enough keywords in, in the list, but only advertise under the keyword phrases that are the most targeted. If you start getting more general, your, the conversion rate plummets. So only ever advertise under the most highly targeted search phrases first. Once you prove those out, then you can start getting a little bit more granular with it. And be careful with the, with the whole broad match there's a thing called a term called broad match. It's where you put in like two words and it'll pull in any phrase that contains the two words. It can really juice the account um, and, and, and charge you a lot of money. So they, I, I prefer what's called exact match. Um, but they're getting rid of exact match. That's going away. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be broad match or nothing pretty soon. But you can also drive calls from Google um, specifically without any clicks. You can, if you, you're looking for calls, let's say you're an event planner, a wedding planner, something like that, and you want people in your area, you can drive them to just call you from Google. Click to call on their phone. They never even have to see your website. Just purely calling you, and you pay for each call that comes in. And you say, okay, I drove in 10 calls. That costed me $100. How much business did I get out of it? Did I get 1,000 out of it? Did I get 10,000? And you, 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 there's a metric there. So the, the click to call phenomenon has, is really taking off. So that's definitely very big right now so that's that's a huge thing so okay well thank you so much for attending thank you